We're in our first week of June here in Central Texas and the garden is thriving. The main reason is we've had record rainfall as well as some milder temps throughout the month of May. So I've got quite a lot of things growing out here. Some of these crops I planted last October or November and I have a lot that I planted in March and April. Let's take a look at what's growing, how it's doing, what I'm harvesting and I'll tell you a little bit about each one. If you're looking to grow some of these crops in the future this can give you a good idea of what they look like as they mature and when you might expect them to begin to harvest under ideal growing conditions. What's up everyone? It's Scott from New Garden Road. You know I'm here to inform, inspire, and elevate you. Encouraging biodiversity and restoring habitat is my mission one garden at a time. I wanna show you what I've been experimenting with this spring and trellising is always something I'm keen on learning new ways to develop. This is an Aunt Ruby's German green tomato and I'm using the Florida weave technique as a trellising system. Very basic, very inexpensive. Let me show you what that looks like. As this tomato plant has grown, I've been adding more twine in a crisscross type of pattern to secure it in an upright fashion. Initially I pruned out some of the bottom leaves up to about 18 to 24 inches and it's got a really nice structure. Oh I got that tomato smell. Isn't that amazing? You just touch a tomato and you get that smell. I'm really keen on adding homegrown nutrients and leafy greens to my diet for the warm season. So this one is new to me. It's called Red Oric. It's a really beautiful plant. I planted three here on the corner. They're getting full sun. But I gotta tell you, so far they've been pretty easy. They took a little bit of time to get established, but now they're starting to branch out. And I've been harvesting from them conservatively for at least three weeks. I haven't really grown a whole lot of eggplants in the past. It's just not a big part of our diet. But I was really keen on trying some out this year. This is a variety called Millionaire. I've already harvested one. They're really beautiful an elongated dark purple eggplant. I do have this plant staked with a two foot bamboo stake and a little bit of a tie up high. That's giving it some stability. It's also parked here next to a tomato plant. I give these one square foot of plant space in the square foot garden style. Down here we've got another variety of eggplant called fairy tale. This one is so beautiful. Check it out, it's like lavender and white streaks. This one's just a baby. There's a little bit of a bigger one down here. I've already harvested a couple and the plant is looking really robust. Peppers are another food crop that I haven't always put a lot into. They're just not a big part of our diet here at home. But nonetheless, I was determined to experiment wholeheartedly this year and I went wild with it. I think I have 10 to 13 plants. I just kept getting them. These are some of the Red Beauty and they have set up some monsters here, in my opinion, for my garden. I'm really excited. Adjacent to them, I've got some purple beauty, as well as some orange lunchbox, and a variety of shishito pepper. Even though I ran out of planting space in my raised beds for peppers, I just couldn't get enough, so I decided to try my hand at growing some in containers. This is a great example for some of you who are growing in a small space and are not sure whether you can grow some of these crops. I've taken a pot here that I think is about seven gallons, and I think that's a good roundabout size for growing peppers. This variety here is called candy cane. It's variegated both on the foliage and on the fruit. The peppers have started to mature. I can see some variegation forming already. Ready. This is supposed to be a sweet pepper and because I needed to have all the colors growing at the same time I've got a sugar F1 here. This is gonna ripen to a nice bright yellow. It's already got three on there They look delicious. I can't wait to snack on these in my lunches alongside some cucumbers and carrots I grew lima beans for the first time last year and it was a pole variety called the violets multicolored butter bean This year I branched out to something even newer which was the Henderson bush lima bean so you can see these have been flowering profusely recently. I love their little blooms. They're so sweet and dainty and they look like they have already set up loads of lima bean pods. These are going to continue to produce into the heat of summer. They're going to be a really great protein source and they're also something that I can save seeds from. And on the other side of the bed from the lima beans I've got the Jacobs cattle drying bean. I've never grown this one before either. You can see it has set up loads of bean pods. I'm just going to let these dry on the plants and then I'll be harvesting them when they're mostly dry and saving them. You can cook them up at that point. You want to soak them before you cook them. This is a beautiful bean. It's like a kidney shaped bean. It's kind of a mottled uh, black or purple and white. I'm growing four different varieties of watermelons again this year but one that's brand new to me and I'm really excited about is this Cherokee Moon and Stars. This is an oblong watermelon and it's got the variegation or the spots on the leaves just like the fruit. 
food. When these fruit develop, they're gonna have a really dark green skin with some yellow spots of varying size. It's quite eye-catching. Initially, you might think, what's wrong with your plant? There's something going on there, but no. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is another new melon variety that I'm growing this year. It's called the Green Machine. It's gonna be a small green fleshed melon. I'm really stoked about that. They start to flower and run outside the bed. Melons are something that you can grow a little bit deeper into June here in Central Texas. So, you know, if you're thinking about what you can plant now, it would be worth considering some cantaloupes, some melons, and some watermelon. The key to all of these crops surviving well throughout the summer is gonna be a healthy soil, regular deep waterings, and a nice layer of mulch combined with regular fertilization and application of liquid seaweed. Growing summer or winter squash in areas like Central Texas where we have the squash vine borer moth can be really challenging. It's so heartbreaking to new gardeners. They don't understand what's going on. They start to see all this frass on the stems of their squash and they think, this is not going well. What is the deal here? Well, the fact of the matter is it's not something that you can easily mitigate or remedy in the garden. There are a variety of things that you can throw at it. I've made a couple of videos about those in the past. You should check them out. I want to make a new one this year because I'm really leaning towards this insect netting. I think that's the way to go. The idea is you cover your plants, whether they're grown from seed or from starts, from the get-go. You don't give those moths a chance to get in there and lay their eggs. As the squash matures, you keep it covered, but once it starts to flower, you got to make a choice. Are you going to hand pollinate them and let them continue to grow protected under that netting or will you be pulling back that netting altogether making them susceptible to the squash vine borer moss letting them go and produce as much as they possibly can while they can it's time to cut back and prune some of my herbs. You can see my oregano has flowered and it's gotten all floppy. It's good to prune those herbs and keep them growing. Along with that, I've got several flowers, some zinnias, some cosmos, and it's good to deadhead those. You want to keep those fresh blooms coming, and that's going to be more flowers for more pollinators and beneficial insects. So far, it's been a productive season. I've been getting a lot of snap beans recently, and the suyolong cucumbers have just exploded. One of the other big successes stories in the garden from last November has been the strawberries. The variety is sequoia and I tell you as soon as I planted these on the perimeter of this 4x8 raised bed they took off. They started running, setting roots, multiplying. I have no idea what the total number of strawberry plants is growing in this bed. Once we got to March they exploded and they had a strong run probably about six weeks into mid-April but with the recent rains and mild temperatures in May they have fired up again, and I've been harvesting strawberries nearly daily. The plants look impeccable. They don't look like they're even phased at this point. I think that's gonna change once we truly get to our hot weather. Everything has its time, and I don't necessarily anticipate my strawberries being perennial in my garden. But I do think that planting them in the fall is the way to go in Central Texas. You get them established, and by the time the weather and the conditions turn right in spring, they're gonna be locked and loaded and ready to produce. So I harvested my garlic and I wasn't really that impressed. I was truly disappointed. You know, I, I wanted to do better with garlic this year. I've grown some nice garlic in the past, but this season and last, uh, just not really what I was looking for. So I haven't quite got that down, but I am gonna keep practicing and I've got them curing in my shed now. I've got a unique system for that. So here we are in my shed. I needed a place to hang up my garlic so I could get it to cure. Out of direct sunlight in a relatively dry area. So that's what I did. I pinned some galvanized fencing to my two by four beams. And then I've just got the garlic bundled together in groups of like six to eight. And then I used some clips to secure it to that galvanized fencing. So you see they're all hanging up there. I've got some space in between them and they've been hanging up close to uh, two to three weeks so they should be nice and dry. And when I take them down, I'll trim off the roots and the dirt and the tops and they should be good for long-term storage several months at that point. I'm really excited about the corn behind me, the Golden Bantam Improved. I think some of it is ready. We're just gonna have to check it out. You wanna come along and see what that looks like? How do you know when corn is ready? Well, you have to check it physically, but one key indicator is the, the silks here have turned brown all the way. And you know, I can feel it. It feels pretty plump. It's a little bit more sparse up here at the top. I don't do anything to prevent the corn earworm from doing damage. It just hasn't been worthwhile in my experience. So there's likely some corn earworm damage at the top of this 
uh, ear of corn. But let's peek and let me show you how I do that. You just have to dive right in. It's not always easy. You do have to tear it, but you can cover it back up. Okay, so there's a corn earworm straight away. Pull that guy out. The way that you tell if they're ready is just you, you apply pressure with your thumb. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> so that was kind of dramatic, but ultimately when they uh, kind of give you a milky liquid, they're ready for harvest. This one looks like it's good. It does have some significant damage up here at the top. The rest of it feels solid. So I end up just cutting those parts off and I've got one to two ears of corn here on each plant and it's 43 plants. So that's gonna be a lot of corn. All right, I wanna show you one of the most diverse harvests that I've got this spring season just yet. This is a red orc, some sorrel, gynura. Check out the beans. Provider and royalty purple pod, fairy tale eggplant, some shishito peppers, suyolong, some sun gold, a celebrity tomato. I've been picking the tomatoes just as they blush, ripening them inside. And this is perpetual spinach, very similar to chard, related to chard, and that grows all year round. Now check out more awesome gardening videos on my channel. Like this video if you like it and follow New Garden Road for weekly content. You can grow your own food. Keep it organic.